morning, GSEC. Can we please get up on our feet so we can get started? Can we begin by celebrating all the fathers in the house, all the dads? Come on, can we give it up? We thank the Lord for each and every one of you. We hope that you have a great and blessed day. Now, are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Let me, let me ask one more time. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Are we ready to give him our best praise? The only one that deserves it. Come on, let's praise.
for all that you've done God just like we sing God we won't forget what you've already done God God we're still grateful God for the battles that you've already fought and won God and we say thank you that you're still fighting on our behalf God God we thank you God that when we lift up a song of praise to you God that you are fighting for us Jesus God we thank you that we don't have to fight in the physical God God but we can come and rest at your feet God God, and just say thank you for everything that you've done. So we do that right now, God. We say thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your peace today, God. Oh, we say thank you, Jesus. Behold the Lamb upon the takes away the sins of all forgiveness flows from hands and feet his violence meets the prince of peace behold a
let's declare who he is one more time. Light of the world, Lamb that was slain, Lion who rose, mighty to save, the fullness of God won't be kept in a grave. Darkness, your hour is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all come on let's declare all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name it stands above them all your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them Oh, no. 
hear your people sing Holy to the King of Kings Holy, you will always be Is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name it stands above them all. Oh God, we declare that today and we believe it today. God, that your name is the name above every name, God. Your name is the highest. God, we join in with heaven today and we cry, holy. Holy is the lamb that was slain. Holy is the king of kings and the prince of peace and the Lord of lords. We give you our praise today, God. We give you our worship. God, because you alone are worthy, God, of everything that we have. Jesus, we say thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, God. God, that we can come heavy burden, God, and leave light today. God, I pray that for your people, God, that we would leave today fresh and new, God, with a peace that passes all understanding, God. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for your presence in this place. And it's in Jesus' mighty, mighty name that we pray and we say together, amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for worship this morning. Happy Father's Day to all the dads in the room and watching online. If you're here in person, you can go ahead and take your seat. If you're connecting online, thank you so much for joining us. Amen. How many of you are thankful for an incredible time in the presence of the Lord this morning as we had the opportunity to worship Him? Amen. Amen. Well, we want to continue our worship this day through the giving of our tithes and our offerings every time that we have an opportunity to come together and to sow into the kingdom of God we are worshiping God by bringing him our first and our best amen so Lord we worship you today oh God we give you all honor all glory and all praise we declare oh God that your name is the name above all other names oh god we give you the glory the worship oh god everything oh god we bring to you this day oh god and say lord that we love you oh god we trust you oh god and we we surrender ourselves to you today oh god every aspect every area of our lives oh god including our finances oh god as we bring to you our first and our best our tithes and our offerings oh god we ask that you would bless them that you would multiply them god that you would use them for your glory for your honor for your kingdom oh god and that we would see oh god you oh god take what is brought into your house and do great and mighty things with it and through it oh god that we would see your name proclaimed high above all of the names oh god in brownsville texas that we would see your name lifted high above all of the names oh god in the state of texas in the united states oh god and all over the world oh god that as we pour into your kingdom oh god that we would see your kingdom come and your will be done oh god would would everyone know the name above all other names and declare proclaim the name of jesus oh god we you we give you thanks we give you praise as we bring to you our tithes and our offerings in jesus name we pray amen let's give good morning gsec we are so excited that you're able to join us for our sunday service we want to welcome all of our guests this morning if this is your first time joining us let us know by scanning the qr code located behind every seat if you're joining us online, please text CONNECT to 956-395-1551. You'll be redirected to fill out our online Connect card. We would love to get to know you and stay connected with you. Vacation Bible School is next week, June 24th through 28th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Today is the very last day to pre-register children who have completed kindergarten through fifth grade. Avoid waiting in long lines at drop-off by pre-registering your kids today. Today is also the last day to sign up to volunteer at VBS. 
There will be a meeting for all VBS volunteers this Tuesday, June 18th at 6.30 p.m. in the GSEC Activity Center. Stop by the table in the lobby or at gseconnect.com for all of the details. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here at GSEC. Well, good morning again, and welcome to Good Shepherd Community Church. Happy Father's Day, by the way. Can all the fathers do me a favor? Every dad in this place, would you stand to your feet this morning? Come on, let's thank the Lord for all the dads in the house today. And would you just stay standing, please? They're going to come by and, and, and bring a gift to you. And I just want to share my heart with you really briefly, and then we want to take a moment to pray. So as you get your gift, go ahead and stay standing. Thank you, dads. Thank you so much for who you are, for being who God has created you to be. Thank you, as this video said, for, for standing. Thank you for persevering, for pressing through, for enduring. Thank you for being who you are. We need godly men to stand up, to rise up, to be dads. Thank you for being who God has called you to be for your families. We love you. We appreciate you. We're so thankful for you. My, my hope would be that you feel loved, that you would feel appreciated, that you would feel honored today. Because what you're doing is not easy, but it's worth it. Amen. Can we do something for all the dads here today? If you're standing by one of these dads, if, if one of these dads is yours, would you extend your hands as we pray for our fathers this morning? Lord, we, we thank you so much for all the dads in this room, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for, for the blessing that they are, oh God. I pray that you would continue to give them wisdom, that you would continue to give them courage and strength, oh God, to continue to be the men that you have called them to be, oh God. I pray that you would just continue to lead and guide them, oh God, as they lead and guide their families, oh God, in, in, in your ways, oh God. I pray that you would just continue, oh God, to be with them, oh God. Be a, a blessing, oh God, to them, oh God. Would you just continue, oh God, to encourage each one here, oh God, as they continue to pursue you with all of their hearts, oh God. We thank you for the dads that are here. We thank you for the dads that are watching online, oh God. And we pray that you would continue, oh God, to be with all of us as we continue, oh God, to press into your presence this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Come on, can we thank the Lord one more time for our dads? And you can be seated this morning. I have the honor and the privilege today of welcoming to the platform one of the greatest men that I know, one of the godliest men that I know, one of the best fathers that I know. I may be a little bit biased because he's my father. Can you help me this morning in welcoming Pastor Richard to the platform this morning? Love you, Dad. Thankful for you. Love you too, son. God bless you. Thank you. Good morning. God bless everybody. Happy Father's Day to all the dads that are here, all the dads that are watching online. Uh, what a special day for us to recognize and acknowledge just who you are, uh, what, what you stand for, how you help, how we, how we navigate life, how blessed we are uh, to be dads, and how blessed we are to have had dads. And I know Father's Day sometimes is kind of a, it can be really, really good. It can be a good time. We're going to gather and eat and do all the things that you do on Father's Day and 
celebrate. And, uh, and the longer that I've been a dad, the more that I'm thankful for having had the opportunity to be a dad. And I'm thankful that I have a heavenly dad who has helped me to be a dad. Because let me ask this question, are there any perfect dads in the house today? Pues nadie, nunca. And so my great comfort has come through all the years of trying to be the best dad that I've been able to be and now a granddad is that I'm not having to try to do it by myself and my own strength with my own wisdom and knowledge, but that I have a heavenly father who's helping me who helped me at the beginning when my kids were young, who helped me after they grown and are married and now have their own families. And to all the dads here this morning, to all the dads watching online, I just wanna encourage you in this one thing. We're not having to be fathers or men or Christians and believers by ourselves. That we have a father in heaven, as we're gonna see in the scripture here in a little bit, who is our helper. And so I want to remind us of that today. But before I go to the scripture in 2 Samuel 23, uh, I do want to remind you of something uh, that we have Vacation Bible School that's coming up. And it's a really, really amazing event that we put, put on for the church, but also for the community. And as, as Jessica said in the announcement, Pastor Jessica said, this is the last day to pre-register. So if you don't want to wait on a long line the first day of EBS, and by the way, I've been here and I've seen that, and everything's going on in here, and there's people still trying to sign up their children. So if you can, if you think you're coming, uh, avoid that where your children can come in and enjoy the, the full service the first day. So I want to encourage you and remind you to go ahead and sign them up today so they can be reg pre-registered for VBS. Now, again, my, I'm going to say a lot of things this morning. Uh, but what I really want you to take home with you, the dads especially, everybody, but especially the dads and those of you that are watching online is that we have a God who helps us. If I don't say anything else today, then take that home with you. And the Bible is full of stories where God's people always face challenges and difficulties. And in the midst of those challenges and difficulties, God would bring about great victories because he loved his kids and he is willing to help them in the midst of their battles. Let me ask this question, and I didn't ask it in the first service, but I feel uh, in, in my spirit to ask this one. Does anybody here, dad, first of all, dads, is there any dad here, any dad watching on my say, I need a great victory now in my life? Just, let me see your hands. I mean, he sees your heart. He says, I need a great victory. Those of you that are watching online, you can give us a thumbs up. Now, just in general to the rest of the church, how many of you say, I need a great victory today? Amen. Well, here's the good news today as I am going to challenge the dads and challenge us as believers to stand in our field and position ourselves and fight for our children and our children's children. I want you to know that today you can experience a great victory. And so with that in mind, I want, to, I want us to turn to 2 Samuel chapter 23, and we're going to read a story there that talks about David's mighty man. But before I do that, I, I read this, uh, I found this a while back, and, uh, and so I just want to read it to you because I'm going to get pretty serious here in a little bit. So I always was always taught, if you're going to teach something real serious, you need to try and do something a little bit funny at the beginning so that they don't just get all the serious stuff. And so let me try to be funny. I'm not as funny as Pastor Rick. He just comes by it naturally. I have to work at it. But uh, Mark Twain said, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant that I couldn't stand to have the old man around. Anybody ever thought about that, about your dad when you were 14 years old or 12 years old and we thought we knew everything? He says, but when I got to be 21 years old, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in just seven years. <laughs> when we really needed help. No, he's not going to use my papa. You know, uh, and someone wrote these other humorous words. It's called the world according to dad. And most of us that are dads, either it was said to us by our dad or we as dads have said it. He says, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. How many of y'all have heard that? How many of y'all have said that? And uh, one of the other things that many dads that, that, we, that we have heard, he says, Shh, I'm watching the ball game. Uh, I like this one. He says, hey, sh by the way, 
bring back all of the change. <laughs> how about this one? He says, uh, how should I know? Go ask your mother. <laughs> how many times have we said that? Moms, how many times have you said, I've heard them say that before. Uh, how about this? He says, hey, by the way, don't forget who's paying the bills around here. <laughs> and then, of course, it says, just wait till you have your own kids. Andale, chiquito, ahí viene. And then this one, which I, is what have, has become more and more frequent in my life, in this season of my life, as family gathers. I was not asleep, I was just resting my eyes. <laughs> so anyway, dads, happy Father's Day. I know that sometimes also in celebrating our dads, it can be a sad time. Not all of us have our dads, our natural dads still living. And so sometimes Father's Day, like Mother's Day, bring back memories, some good, some not so good. And so for all of you today that are here, those of you watching online, I'm praying for you that, that, that regardless of how we are viewed as dads or how we viewed our dads, whether they're present or past, that we are reminded that we have a heavenly father who is always with us and he's for us and he's always willing and wanting to help us. And so I just want to remind us today as I, uh, before I read the scripture in 2 Samuel, is that whether we want to or not, and I'm speaking specifically to the dads and to the men in the church and those watching online, but I'm also speaking to all the believers, but specifically to the dads and to the men, I want you to know that whether we want to or not, we are leaving a legacy we will leave an imprint and we will leave a mark on the generation to come, on our children and our grandchildren biologically, but also on the children and the young men and the young people in our community. We will leave a mark on them based on how we live our lives. And because I recognize this in my own life, I'm reminding myself and I'm reminding us that we must stand. We have to stand firmly on God's word, on God's promises, on God's truths, and we can't afford to get distracted. We can't get, we can't get distracted from the task at hand of being a dad and being a father and knowing that we're gonna leave an imprint for the next generation. And we have to determine to never quit, to never give up. No matter how hard things get, no matter how difficult things get, even when we make mistakes. Let me ask another question for those of you that'll be honest. Remember, we're in church. Don't lie in church. How many of us have ever made mistakes before as dads, as parents, as just as people? Let me see your hands. How many sons and daughters have made mistakes when it comes to our relations with us? Listen, we all make mistakes, but no matter the mistakes that we make, we cannot give up, we cannot quit, we cannot stop fighting for our children and our children's children because the things that we are fighting for right now are so important. We live in an upside down world, dads and moms and everybody, but I'm speaking to the dads specifically because I believe that we as dads need to, and I'm gonna show you in the scripture, we need to be reminded of some things that are very, very important that God has called us to. See, because I can't forget that, that besides just being a, a pastor and being a, a, a husband and, 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 and doing ministry and, and doing all those things, that I have an assignment. We all have an assignment that God has called us to a mission, that God has called us to represent him and to be an example to those that are yet to come, those that are coming behind us, those that we're impacting, whether they are biological children or whether they're spiritual children that are being birthed into the kingdom of God, we have a mission and a responsibility to lead and to stand and to fight in a world that has everything upside down. I know you've noticed this, I don't have to tell you, but we're living in those times biblically that the Bible talks about that people will call what is good evil and they'll call what is evil good. And we're living in those times right now. So in the midst of that kind of world that we are living in, we have to understand the, 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 the privilege and the responsibility of what God has called us to as dads, as men, and just in general as, as believers. But here's what I also know, in the midst of fighting for, and by the way, what we're fighting for is worth fighting for. I don't know about you, my kids are worth fighting for. My grandchildren are worth fighting for. 
their peace and their safety and their place of knowing God and, and growing up with biblical values. The things that, that a lot of our culture is trying to take from us, I believe is worth fighting for. And I believe that God believed it's worth fighting for because he sent Jesus, his son, to die, his only son to die, that we may have salvation, that we may have freedom, that we may have truth, that we may have his word, that we may have a plumb line that we can live by and not just leave it up to people with crazy ideas and crazy philosophies that we have a fight worth fighting for. That's why he has given us his Holy Spirit. That's why he's given us the promises in his word so that we can leave an imprint for our children and our children's children biologically and spiritually that will inspire them to faith, that will inspire them to stand up and to fight for what's right. Amen? But I also know this, dads. Now I'm talking to dads specifically again. Life has a way of wearing you out. Being a dad can wear you out in the midst of the responsibilities of being a man and a husband and, a, and, 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 and your work and, and, and everything else. I said, you know, life can wear you out. The responsibilities of life can wear you out. But God has designed you as a man to be able to bear that weight. But he never intended for you to bear that weight by yourself. He never intended me to bear that weight by myself. He created me with an understanding after I was born again and I surrendered my life to the Lordship of Christ Jesus. I know that God is helping me. I know that I cannot do life and navigate all the challenges of life by myself and he has promised to be in me and be with me and help me in every circumstance of my life. Life has a way of wearing us out and to tire you. Let me ask this question. Any, any dads, any men tired this morning? Anybody watching on say, man, I'm just tired, man. There's just a lot of stuff going on. I'm tired of having to, how do I, I explain this to my son or to my daughter? How do I, I mean, just kind of like, all the things that we're bombarded with. I'm tired of all that stuff. And if we're not careful, that being weary will cause us to quit and we'll forget what it is that God has called us to as sons and daughters. Because before I'm a dad, I'm a son. Y'all understand that? And my heavenly father is a good father. And I know that he's always helped me and will continue to help me. Now, I also want to encourage you dads that are tired and feeling weary. If you're tired and you're weary, that is evidence to me that you're fighting, that you're standing, that you're in the middle, that you're not just giving in to culture. You're not just giving in to whatever it is that's going on around you. If you're weary, that means that you're, you've taken up the fight and you're standing in the middle of your home and you're standing in the middle of your family, your workplace, and that you are standing for truth and you are, you are being the man, the husband, the, the dad that God has called you to be. And that will cause you to become weary. So don't let the weariness cause you to quit. Let it just be an evidence that you're fighting for something that's worth fighting for. Amen. So let's turn to second Samuel chapter 23. And I'm going to read part of a story here and there's a couple of scriptures that I'm adding to it so you won't have it back there to show up in the screen but let's start in verse uh, 8 of, of 2 Samuel chapter 23 and this is talking about David's mighty men David surrounded himself with men that would stand up and fight and defend God and God's people and God's promises from the enemies that were trying to come and take it from them. Follow with me, starting in, in uh, verse 8 of 2 Samuel chapter 23. It says, these are the names of the mighty men who David had. And he goes on to name, uh, 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 man, some of these names I can't even pronounce. So this guy, Adino the Esnite, because he had, he had killed 800 men at one time. Pelionero ese chavo. You think about it, 800 men at one time. I mean, how many of you have been in a real fight before? You don't have to, I mean. <laughs> how many of you know about that? Three minutes, five minutes, yeah, I said, I mean, either way, you're wore out. So, I mean, you just, I mean, right, it's, it's, it's tiring. It's not like, and so this guy, 800 men at one time. He says, and after him, this was his guy, Esnight, but after him, they, they, they're, they're naming the mighty men of God. He says, was Eleazar. Everybody say Eleazar with me. And I'm going to come back to that name here in a little bit. Eleazar, the, the son of Dodo, the, the Achatite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they def, 
defied the Philistines, the enemies who were gathered there for battle and the men of Israel had retreated. In other words, some men quit and they were not fighting the enemies that were coming to take their wives, their children, their families, their possessions. But there was these men that stood, these mighty men that David was naming now in the Bible. He says they did not retreat when they got tired, when they got tired, they didn't quit when things got difficult. They took their place. They stood in the middle of where they were supposed to be and they determined to fight even though they were tired. He says, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered, verse 10 says, he arose, he stood up, they got up. Man, can I just say something to that, to the whole church, but to the man in that specific, it's time to stand up. It's time to rise up and to take our place as believers, as sons of God, so that we can leave an imprint for our children and our children's children. Because if not, the only imprint they have is what the world and the culture is giving them. He arose and he attacked the Philistines. Catch this, until his hand was weary and his hand stuck to the sword. He was fighting with a sword and he's fought so long, even in the midst of his weariness, that his hand literally, he could not undo his hand from the sword because he had held on to it so tightly. And he says, his hand stuck to the sword and the Lord brought about a great victory that day. How many of you said you, wanted to, you needed a great victory today? Well, he said, the way that we have that great victory is that we hold on to the sword as we're fighting against a thing that are trying to destroy us, our marriages, our family, our children, our churches, our city, and our nation. And I'm not talking about a physical sword. The word talks about the Bible, the word of God being like the sword of the spirit. And we need to hold on to God's word tightly in the middle of the battles, especially when we're fighting for our children and our children's children and our marriages and our families and our churches and our community. And he says, and when he did that, because he was willing to hold on to the sword, even when he was tired, he says, the Lord brought about a great victory. And I don't know about you, but I want to see the Lord bring about a great victory again for me, for my children, for my children's children. And then look, verse 11, and I didn't give you this scripture, but I'm just gonna read a couple more. It says, after him was Shammah, the son of Agi the Heretite, the Philistine had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece full of ground, full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines. I know we don't eat lentils, son frijoles. That's what lentils are, they're just beans, a different kind of bean. And he stood in the middle of the field, like I did, hey man, no, no. You can have my potato chips, but this taco de frijol no se va. <laughs> there was a piece of ground full of lentils, so the people fled from the Philistines. They were coming to take what was theirs, and most of them fled. Verse 6, but he, speaking of, he stationed himself, he positioned himself in the middle of the field, and he defended it. And he killed the Philistines, so the Lord brought about a great victory. Let's pray. Father God, Thank you for your word. Thank you for these dads, these men that are in this church here and watching online. Thank you for your sons and daughters that are here, oh God. Lord, it's time for us to awake. It's time for us to take our position in our field, the field that is our home, the field of our families, the field of our children, this church, the churches in the city, this city, that it's time for us to position ourselves and defend Lord, what you have given to us, oh God, so that we can watch you bring a great victory in the midst of everything that's going on. Help me to preach this word. Give us ears to hear what you're saying and eyes to see what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this guy Eleazar, if you look back and study it, for those of you scholars that like to look back and study, by the way, take the scriptures that I give you and that Pastor Rick gives you or whoever's preaching and then take them home and read them for yourself. We would never intentionally teach you something that's not true or not biblical, but our encouragement is always take what we're teaching you, either on your app or notes or however you get it on the website, and then read those scriptures for yourself and ask the Lord if what we're teaching you is true. Because he said he'll send the Holy Spirit to teach us truth. So I want to encourage you to not just receive, but to go back and look at the scriptures for yourself and let God, the Holy Spirit, speak to you. But the word Eleazar, Eleazar literally means God is helper. That was his name. His name, his name literally meant God is helper. And it says that he fought in the middle of his field that the, that the sword stuck to his hand. And you know why he didn't let go of the, word, of the sword, which is the word for us? is because he knew that that was a weapon that God had given him to help him 
defeat his enemies and to help him experience a great victory. Maybe you need to experience victory in your marriage. Maybe you need to experience victory in one of the lives of your children. Maybe you're struggling with an addiction or something that's got a stronghold and you need to experience a great victory this day. And the way that we experience victory this day is not by giving up or quitting when we make a mistake or when we fail. It's by getting a hold of the word of God, getting a hold of the sword and holding on to it no matter how tired we are, no matter how disappointed we are, no matter how difficult the situation is, we're going to get a hold of God's word and we're going to hold on to it until we experience a great victory that he says he has for us. So when we are weary, make sure to hold on to the sword. Ephesians 6, 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This is the word of God. We need to hold on to it. Dads, when you've tried everything and we try and we fit, get, get a hold of God's word. I tell the men at our breakfast with pastor, get a scripture, get the scripture in your heart and in your spirit and then remind yourself what God has said in his word and hold on to the sword no matter what. On our way to leaving a legacy, on our way to leaving an imprint on our children and our children's children, we must stand in the middle of our field. We must stand in the middle of the places that God calls us to in our relationships with our wives and our children and our families and our workplace and our churches in our city and we must we must not get distracted and we must never quit we cannot get quit don't get distracted by climbing the corporate ladder don't get distracted by having more stuff don't get distracted in the middle of time when we have to war we can't we, we just we can't get distracted and forget that God has given us an assignment and that we are leaving an impression for the generation to come and we must lend ourselves to what God is instructing us now I'm not telling you to not have fun I'm not telling you to not enjoy uh, the, the things that God entrusts to our care. I'm just saying don't let the ease and the comfort of having more than what we used to have distract us from our real assignment. How do we do that? How do we keep from being distracted? Well, Hebrews chapter 12, verse two says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. In other words, he said, I know that I'm suffering right now. I know that I have to live sacrificially. I know that this is gonna cost me, but the fight that I have to fight, even to the point of death, is worth fighting for. And you know what he was worth fighting, what he was fighting for, that he thought was worth it? You and me and our children and our children's children. And it's not our fight, it's his fight, but we have to partner with him through the generations, just like always through the stories of, of the men and women of God who served him faithfully and who decided to trust him no matter what. He says, keep your eyes on Jesus who endured the cross. He despised the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, and he says, for consider him who endured, speaking of Jesus, such hostility from sinners. And by the way, the church and believers, sometimes we're enduring hostility from sinners. They call us haters. They tell us that we're rigid. They tell us that we're old-minded. They tell us that we're living in, 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 in old times, that that was then, that this is now. If you take a stand for Jesus, you're gonna suffer. If you speak the truth, you're gonna be, you're gonna be uh, mocked and, 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 and you're gonna endure, you're gonna experience hostility from sinners. He says, while you're standing in the middle of your field in the midst of what the world says and what culture says and what they're saying about the church and Christianity, he says, you have to have a strength to stand in the middle of your marriage, in the middle of your family, in the middle of your workplace, in the middle of your church, in the middle of your city. You have to be able to stand for Jesus. And I'm not talking about being obnoxious. I'm talking about we know that we have a call and assignment from God that we are supposed to be imitators of him and that we are supposed to be examples for those that are coming up behind us. And he says, don't quit, Dad. And by the way, Dad, thank you. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for enduring all that you have to endure. Thank you for having to hear other people mock and, and make fun of your faith or because you're not going out doing what they're doing anymore and you made a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being a man who's able to stand on God's word and hold on to his word and hold on to his promises, hold on to the sword no matter what. And in that, in the midst of our mock, in the midst of our haters, in the midst of those people who try to uh, uh, put us in a picture that's inaccurate, God says, I will bring a great victory to you. 
says, consider him who endured lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And we persevere and we endure by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Let me ask this question, dad, what are you focused on? What do you have your eyes on? Now, can I ask the whole of the church, what do you have your eyes on? Are we keeping our eyes on Jesus? Are we keeping our eyes on what we want, what we don't have? What we, I, I don't know what our focus is, but in this season, like I said in 20, at the end of this year, that this year God would call us to a season to recalibrate, to make fine tune adjustments in how we think, that we have to think like he thinks in his word, to how we act, that we must act like he tells us to act in his word and that we must keep our focus on him. So it's a time to adjust and it's a time to awaken, to rise up. And it's a time to take a stand in the middle of our fields and defend it and protect it. If I don't defend my children, who's gonna defend them? If we don't defend our grandchildren, who's gonna defend them? And I'm not talking about fighting and just having verbal, uh, uh, paying verbal whatever spades or whatever swords with something. I'm talking about living a life. Living a life as an example that we believe in God even when things go tough. To teaching them how to repent when we make mistakes and when we fail. None of us is perfect, but God says in the midst of everything that you do, if you'll keep your eyes on me, I'm going to help you. And in helping us, he's going to help our children and our children's children. And they're worth fighting for. They're worth sacrificing for. They're worth everything that we do. It's worth it. Dads, thank you. Thank you for being sacrificial. Thank you for fighting. Thank you for coming to church. Thank you for connecting online. Thank you for bringing your family and encouraging your children to VBS and the things that are offered and whatever you do spiritually. Thank you for in the midst of a world that says, oh man, that church stuff is for old ladies and sissies. I don't know how else to say that. I almost said something else. <laughs> but church is for men, real men, who will stand up like Eleazar, who knows in the midst of the controversies, in the midst of the battles, in the midst of the mocking, that we have a God who's helping us and that we are fighting a fight, but we're not fighting it by ourselves. We have a God who says, I'm gonna send you my helper. In John chapter 14, he says, and he will come and he is the Holy Spirit and he will not only be with you, but he will be in you and he will help you. He will empower you. He will teach you truth and he will give you victory. And this Father's Day, I want to remind us that as parents, as dads, as spouses, that Eliezer was able to persevere and stand because he knew God was helping him. And I come to remind you, Dad, you're not alone. I know you've got challenges. I know sometimes you feel like it's not enough. I know sometimes you feel like I'm doing the best I can. And, that, and God doesn't expect us to, to, to give ourselves the victory and to pat ourselves on the back because we were able to. God just says, if you'll trust me, if you trust that I'm helping you, he says, even when you don't feel it and even when you don't see it, I'm working and I promise to help you. So we can't quit what we've started. We can't quit what we started in our personal walk of faith, in our marriages, in our families, in our churches. We've got to remain strong. We must bear trials. Who told us that Christianity was going to be easy? Who told us that we would have no problems? Who told us that everybody would like us? Who told us that we would be popular? I don't know who preached that message, but it's contrary to the gospel of what God teaches in his word. We're going to have difficulties. We're going to have challenges. We're going to have battles. But God says, I will help you in every circumstance, in every battle and bring you victory, all I'm asking you to do is to stand, to get a hold of the sword and never let it go no matter how hard it gets. We must, we must bear trials. We must remain. We must continue to endure if we're going to experience a great victory today and we're going to transfer a great victory to our children and our children's children. It used to be in my life that sometimes as a, as a new believer, when I first got saved in 1980, that if things didn't happen quickly or easy or how or when I wanted it to happen, I would quit. I know none of you ever think that way, but I used to think that way when I was just learning about my faith and what God had called me to. If it would become inconvenient or too hard or there was not enough time, if it would require on my part sacrifice or if it cost us something, I would just quit because I tried for five minutes and it didn't work, so I just quit. If I didn't feel it, I'd quit. And the Lord reminds us today, dads especially, but everybody, that we can't live by feelings. 
We have to live by faith. And we have to live by faith in God is my helper. Even when it doesn't seem like I have any help. There were times where I would, in my difficulties, in my challenges as a man, as a husband, trying to do marriage and, and not having had an example of how to be a husband, how to be a, I would just, I would get so frustrated because I, I wanted everything to be right, but I didn't know how to do it. And God began to help me. God has always helped me. Everything I've accomplished is not because I figured something out, it's because I realized that God is my helper. He was up there at the very beginning and he's there right here, right now. I need his help as much today as I did when I first got saved in 1980. And my promise to you is that if we'll hold on to him and the sword and the word, he will help us in every circumstance, in every situation. And when things would get too hard for me early on, and you all know my testimony in my Christian walk before I was a pastor, I would look for sympathy. I would look for comfort. I would look for relief. I would look for pleasure. I would look for entertainment instead of looking for victory. And God wants to bring victory to us as dads, as, as men, as, as believers in the church. I used to look for a way out instead of for a way to look in, to stay in. I forget that I was in a battle for the future, my future, the future of my family, the future of my children. And I would get distracted because I got a good job and I was making money and I was doing all those things. And so I said, well, if I can't win this victory, at least I can provide a little bit more for my family. And I got distracted from the focus of God is saying, I'm going to help you. And I'm trying to lead you somewhere that's more than just temporal, but is eternal. And he said to me, listen, in those seasons of my life, I used to play instead of pay, instead of pray. And we cannot in this season for any reason play when we should pray. But we got to focus in on him because prayer is effective according to the book of James. We need to pray, we need to fight, we need to commit, we need to connect, we need to serve, we need to give, we need to rally together and help one another fight a fight that's worth fighting for. Eliezer didn't quit even though he was tired physically and emotionally because he knew that God was gonna help him. In this season of my life, as I said, I'm still praying and asking God to help me is, uh, you know, when I, when we transitioned the church and Pastor Rick became the senior pastor of this church, I didn't just think, oh man, thank God. Someone else's turn to fight. Someone else's turn to commit. Someone else's turn to give. Someone else's time to serve. Someone else's time to deal with all the, so I, I that, that, that's not, that's not in my mentality. My mentality wasn't like, like the old uh, song that Vicente Fernandez, ojalá que te vaya bonito, mijo. I fought my battles, no, que te vaya bien. No! I'm still fighting. My heart is still for my family. My heart is still for my children. My heart is still for this church. My heart is still for this city. We don't retire from ministry. We don't retire from God. We don't retire and just kind of su- right away into the sunset. We continue to fight but we continue to fight different fights. We continue to fight. We've got fight men, dads, please hear me. We must continue to fight regardless of the season that we're in. We keep fighting. Listen, we cannot go back to the beginning of something and change it, but we can start today and do things that will change the ending of the plans that the enemy had for them. We can turn them around, experience great victories, not for us anymore, but for our children and our children's children and the generations to come. Quitting is not an option. James 1 says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. He says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or perseverance. We endure and we persevere by putting our eyes on Jesus. In the parable of the sower, he says that in Luke chapter 8, he says that that the word gave, gave forth fruit to those who endured. It says, but the ones that fell on the good ground are those having heard the word with a noble and good heart. Keep it and bear fruit with patience. Our sword, God's word sometimes doesn't seem to work. We pray and things don't change. We pray and it doesn't happen the way the word says it does. And sometimes we don't receive the victory because we quit too soon. We give up 
We try God's word, we try God, but we don't surrender and commit to him and believe that his word and his promises are true regardless of what I'm experiencing, regardless of what I'm feeling. I've got to hold on to him. I've got to hold on to the sword and believe that God is going to bring victory to me. We can't give up on him at the first setback, at the first sign of struggle or resistance. We, we can't quit and go back to our own thoughts and our own ideas and our own plans. And I used to be that kind of person early on where I was looking for a reason to quit instead of looking for a reason to go on and to persevere. Don't quit, Dad. Don't quit, sons and daughters of God. Look for a reason to persevere. And the reason to persevere is God himself. But then the people around us, they're worth fighting for. We give up too soon and we never see the fruit of our patience. One last scripture. And by the way, I haven't said happy Father's Day. No los estoy regañando. I'm not getting on to you. I'm calling you forth. I'm calling you up. It's, it's, it's a godly challenge. It's a, it's a father to a son to a family saying don't quit. Come on. Let's go. Corinthians says you have many teachers but you don't have many fathers. Basically and listen, our children have many teachers. They get on the internet everybody's trying to shape them and form them. Everybody's trying to put their ideas and their philosophies in them. Everybody's speaking to them. They have many teachers but what they need is fathers spiritual fathers that are standing with a sword in their hand and they're not fighting each other they're fighting together against the real enemies that are coming to destroy our children and our children's children and the generation to come and being a spiritual father doesn't have to do with our age it has to do with God what God has put inside of us I don't know about you but I'm fighting I'm still fighting listen listen to what he says here I promise you this is the last scripture in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 32 it says think back and I read this it's think back Richard think back dad think back church think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ." I'll never forget when he saved me. Now, you know my testimony. Back in 1980, I think back and I thank God that he didn't leave me like I was in the condition, lostness that I was, that he saved me. He came to help me. And that same God that came to help me in 1980, where I was without hope, without faith, that I didn't know God, that I had no eternal life with him, what I didn't know when I was in my addictions, he came and he helped me. And the same God that helped me then is the God that comes today to help me, to give me strength and courage, to declare his word and to challenge us, beginning with me, to stand up and fight and to hold on to the sword no matter what. He says, think back on those early days where you first learned about Christ, how you remained faithful even though it's meant terrible suffering. Verse 34 says, 33, sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and you were beaten and sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same thing. Verse 34 says, you suffered, I'm gonna ask the worship team to come up, you suffered along with those who were thrown into jail and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So do not throw away that confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Verse 37, for in just a little while, the coming one will come and will not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith, but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful one whose souls will be saved. Come on, dads. Come on, dads. Come on, church. We have a good God. And whatever you're battling, he comes to help you today. Dad, whatever you're battling, whatever you're struggling with, he comes to help you today. He is helper. He is God, my helper. He'll help my marriage, my family, my children, the church. Thank you for being the faithful ones who continue to hold on to the sword even when you're tired. It says Eliezer arose and he attacked and he fought though he was tired. I want us to go back into this song here in just a minute. Happy Father's Day, guys. Happy Father's Day. 
And Father God, thank you for being a God who's willing to help us. I don't know about you, but even this season of my life, I got, I got some fight in me. Not because I'm a good person, but because he, he is good. And his promises and his word endures forever. I don't want to slowly sail into the sunset of my life to spend eternity with him. I don't want to just be out on the beach relaxing and hanging out while my children and my children's children are in the middle of the mess that our world is in. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I want to enjoy. I'm going to enjoy the beach and all that. I'm just don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But that's not my focus. It is season of my, listen, when I go home, when God decides that it's my time is up and he's going to take me to glory, when they put me in a coffin, I don't want to go peacefully, slowly into that sunset. I want to die with a sword in my hand. I want to die with a fight. I'm going to, I'm going to die fighting, fighting for truth, fighting for what is right and be able to share that with whoever is willing to listen. I'm not here to win a popularity contest. I never have been. I'm not here to try and gain material possessions. I'm here because God rescued me. He helped me and he brought me out of despair and hell and destruction and decided for some reason he had a purpose for my life and he's given me eternal life and everything that I have and I am, I owe to him. I'm not gonna stop fighting. Don't stop fighting now. Don't stop standing in the middle of your field. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. Don't quit. We all make mistakes, beginning with me. But even in my mistakes, I hold on to him even tighter. Why? Because he is my helper and he is the only one that has brought victory to me and he's the only one that will continue to bring victory in this season of my life. Come on, Dad, let's go. Come on, church, let's go. And before we go into this song, and I'm gonna ask Pastor Rick to come close the service. I want you to know I love you guys. I'm praying for you. I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for Pastor Rick and the staff and the team of this church. I'm fighting for your marriage. I'm fighting for your families. I told the first service, I wanna go to my grave with a bloody sword. And I said, don't go kill anybody. I'm not talking about literally with a talk about spiritually don't just play let's pray and let's fight for each other let's fight for his church let's fight for this community let's fight for the generations that's come every day when I walk or whether I'm at home but every day I pray this prayer and the Lord reminded me of this prayer while we sang this song that's why we're going back to it and every day I say, Lord, I bow my heart in humility, but I said, I bow my heart and I lift my hands and I place them between your hands again today, Lord. And I pledge to be loyal to you and only you. And I pledge to be your man this day. Give me courage and grace to be that man. Every day I pray that prayer. Why? Because I need his help. If you're a dad here or a man, you say, I, I want to pray that prayer. I want to take a stand, but I'm going to need his help to do what I need to do. If that's you, quickly stand, stand to your feet. If you're watching online, you can give me a thumbs up and say, I, wa I want to make that prayer. I want, to, I want to bow my heart, lift my hands between his, and I want to pledge my loyalty to him. I'm not going to quit. I've got challenges and I've experienced failure, but I'm not going to quit. Because today I know that I know that I know that God has come to help me. And I want you to look around, man, because we're in this together and we're gonna pray for each other. We're gonna encourage each other. And we're, gonna, we're gonna challenge each other. We're gonna keep each other focused. And I know this is for many here, but I wanted the men to stand first. If you're here, you're just a believer, mom, dad, whatever you are, maybe you're not a dad, but you say, I wanna pray that prayer of commitment to today, pastor. I want to bow my heart and lift my hands and pledge my loyalty to him. I want to stay in the fight. If that's you, just stand where you're, where you're at also. Just stand to your feet. God comes to mark us. God comes to mark us. And my prayer was that everyone that stands, that God would send the Holy Spirit 
in a real powerful way that you know that you're not by yourself, that God is helping you. God is helping you. So would you, by your heart, would you lift your hands if you feel comfortable and just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father God, I bow my heart and I lift my hands and I put them between yours and I pledge to be loyal to you this day. Give me the grace and the courage to be your son, to be your daughter, to be the father, the husband, the wife, the son or daughter that I need to be this day. Help me, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, to help me with this song, Jacqueline? And I wanna make this our prayer of commitment to the Lord. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. We're entrusting our lives and the future of our children and children to the one who stands above them all. Amen. Let's sing this together. And dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all up your name above all other names oh god and we commit ourselves to you oh god i pray father that you again would strengthen us oh god encourage us oh god and lead us in and through all things oh god i thank you for the fathers that are in here oh god i thank you for the men of god that are in this place oh god i pray that you oh god would continue to lead and guide us oh god i thank you for the for the families that are here oh god for those that are making a commitment to take a stand oh god to stand for the truth of your word oh god i pray that you would go before us you would go behind us you would go all around to surround us with your presence, oh God, as we step into everything that you have planned and purposed and prepared for us, oh God, as we commit our lives to you, Lord. We give you all honor, all glory, and all praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord one more time this morning. And you can be seated just one more time this morning. I'm going to invite our ministry teams to come forward. If you need prayer for anything this morning, please do not leave this place without receiving prayer. We would love the opportunity to pray for you and pray with you. So don't leave this morning until you've had an opportunity to pray with one of our incredible 
uh, men and women of God up here who are ready and standing by to pray with you. I also want to welcome you today. If this is your very first time with us, God bless you. We're so glad that you're here. Welcome to Good Shepherd Community Church. And as you leave today, you can go right out here to our main driveway area. You'll see a blue tent. Pastor George Vasquez will be there along with some other volunteers. And we would love to just say hello to you and get to know you a little bit better. And then we have a special gift that we want to give to you today before you leave. So make sure you stop by and you see them all on your way out. Amen. What a blessing it's been to be here with all of you today and those of you watching online. And We're blessed for one reason and one reason only. Why is that? Yes. To be a blessing. So go be blessed, be a blessing. Have a great week and we'll see you right back here next Sunday for another service. God bless you.